guys, how are you all doing? Welcome back to Brian Reads. If you're new here, my channel is all about books, as that is pretty much what I love to share and talk about. In this channel, I make videos about book reviews, book discussions, and reading challenges. And my passion is to share with you what I learned from what I read. Alright, so all of you might have wondered, bro, you're supposed to post three days ago, what happened? Yes, unfortunately, I did not have enough time to finish the book that I'm going to be reviewing today. As my uni has just started its second semester, so I thank you for your patience. Alright, so as I have shown you before, the book that I'm going to be talking about today is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. And before I dive in into the book, let me tell you a quick story on who Jules Verne was. So Jules Verne was a French novelist, playwright, and poet. Most of his well-known works include Journey to the Center of the Earth, Around the World in 80 Days, including the book that I'm going to be talking about today. Fern was often referred to as the father of fiction, as he was a major literary author in France and throughout Europe, and in 1979, he was ranked second as the world's most translated author. If you are familiar with Fern or ever, like, ever read his book, you might have realized one thing that most of his books revolves around the reoccurring theme of adventure or journey type of genre. And this writing influence he actually got from his boarding school teacher. So Fern's boarding school teacher actually had a husband who was a castaway survivor and always talks about how he survived in a desert island like Robinson Crusoe, which is another classic. If you guys are not familiar with the story of Robinson Crusoe, it's basically uh, a man who was cast away on a deserted island and he's fighting and is surviving his way to go back to where he came from. So Fern's boarding school memory actually stuck with him and influences the way he writes. It is often referred to as the Robinsonate theme, which is a literary term that describes a desert island story. And in Fern's books, it can be clearly seen, such as the mysterious island, and the school for Robinsons, which he later wrote. When Fern was 19, he started to write in the styles of Victor Hugo, who was another famous French author, and he wrote Les Miserables. Um, sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Um, don't kill me in the comments. And sometime later in his life, he also became friends with Alexander Dumas, who was the author of The Three Musketeers, which I enjoyed reading about. This is also another classic, and I'll be making a video about this in the near future. Fern's most famous novel series is titled Voyages Extraordinaire in French, or in English, Extraordinary Voyages, um, in which this book is a part of. And I want to quote directly from him on what he said his purpose was in writing this novel series. He says, To outline all the geographical, geological, physical, and astronomical knowledge amassed by modern science and to recount in an entertaining and picturesque format that is his own, the history of the universe. And when asked what his recurring theme was, he said, My object has been to depict the Earth and not the earth alone, but the universe. And his most famous works out of this novel series are Journey to the Center of the Earth, Around the World in 80 Days, From Earth to the Moon, and of course, this book right here. So there was a quick story on who the author was, on who Jules Verne was. So now let's get right into the book. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was set in the year 1866, where at that time, underwater attacks were happening to green vessels of all nationalities, making it a global issue and phenomenon. No, God, please, no! And from that, rumors and theories start spreading regarding the existence of an undiscovered and mysterious sea creature. Most of the victims who had a direct encounter with this creature, who had their vessels attack, have described the creature to having an enormous body resembling a long object, Spinal shape, most of the time phosphorin, and definitely larger and faster than a whale. Pierre Aronnax, the main character in the story, 
works as an assistant professor in the Museum of Natural History in Paris. And during the time of that worldwide incident, he had just finished a scientific research in Nebraska. And before finally going back to France, he decided to visit New York. Professor Aronnax was a distinguished scholar, and having written his book titled Mysteries of the Great Submarine Grounds, he established himself in this branch of natural history. Upon his arrival in New York, journalists and reporters are eager to get the professor's point of view or opinion or perhaps even a scientific explanation towards this particular creature. During the time of that global phenomenon, people had only two questions to ask. Whether this thing is a secret government technology made by the hands of man, or it is actually a monster sea creature that has not been discovered before. This led to the professor suggesting theories that a marine animal of some kind more specifically, a gigantic narwhal was to blame for the incidents happening to all the marine vessels. The United States then decided to conduct an expedition which will start from New York City, hoping to put to rest all the rumors and theories and finally find out or even capture the sea creature. And the professor was invited in the last minute to join this voyage. The professor along with his servant Conseil and a harpooner from Canada named Ned decided to embark on the Abraham Lincoln, a frigate of high speed well chosen for searching this creature and the vessel was captained by Commander Farragut. The expedition started in Manhattan's Pier, then to the southeast coast of America, to the Tropic of Capricorn, Cape Horn, before finally reaching the Pacific Ocean. And finally, after five long months, just before entering the coast of Japan, they finally encountered this sea creature. However, it was not easy, as for days and nights, the frigate had to try and get close to the cetacean as it gets further and further away. The sea creature is seemingly tireless, frustrating the commander and requiring the frigate to give everything it's got to finally get close and close the distance. The Abraham Lincoln, having successfully gained on the cetacean, decided to ask the harpooner on board, Ned Land, to attack its body. And the harpooner seemed perplexed as his harpoon struck a really hard body, perhaps similar to that of a metal body. After that first blow, three of our main protagonists, the Professor, Ned Land the Harpooner, and Conseil, was then hurled into the sea as the creature attacks the frigate. They found themselves on top of this marine animal, which they later realized that it is actually a submarine vessel. Men came out of it, decided to get them, hurled them in, and kept them as prisoners until the next morning. And that's when they met with Captain Nemo, the commander of the submarine vessel. Captain Nemo was an odd man. He said that the presence of the professor, consul, and the harpooner in his submarine vessel was troubling his existence, as he had broken ties with humanity a long time ago. Possibly is the reason why he's living under the sea for so long. After talking to the captain and trying to figure out who he really is, the professor found the captain to come across a bit rude. And when his rudeness was being brought up by the professor, he boldly said and replied, I am not what you call a civilized man. I have done with society entirely for reasons I alone have the right of appreciating. I do not therefore obey its laws, and I desire you never to allude to them before me again. Dude, calm down man. When the captain met the guests, he actually said that he had the right to throw them off the submarine vessel and simply leave them on the bottom of the ocean, cause it's his property I guess. But upon calming down, he decided to let the three guests stay on board. But with one condition, that they remain as his prisoners and they are never allowed to go back to their world. Meaning, um, they can't go back online and they can't go back to their 
um, previous lives. Being the captain's prisoners, he clearly states that he never desires for violence, but he expects from them passive obedience and simply said that there are some orders that the captain gives and they must obey. When the professor asks on how he should address the captain or call him, he replied with, I am nothing to you but Captain Nemo, and you and your companions are nothing to me but the passengers of the Nautilus. Wait a minute! Who are you? He was indeed a very mysterious man with no known background, so yeah, he was just this guy who roams the sea up and down, up and down. That's it. Upon settling down, the professor decides to take a tour with the captain around the around this underwater machine as he's uncertain how long he's gonna stay might as well know where he's actually gonna do things inside the submarine next to the dining room where our guests had been served breakfast earlier that morning before meeting the captain was a library the professor was dazzled as he saw 12,000 volumes that the captain has in store in the library. The library was furnished with elegant furniture and shone with light. The professor was not able to imagine the amount of knowledge and experience contained within these books, as God knows how long the captain has roamed the seas. After roaming around the library, the captain brought the professor to the drawing room. The drawing room was a four-sided room, approximately 30 feet long, 18 feet wide, and 15 high. The drawing room was full of uniformly framed pictures, wall ornaments, and many works of great value from an exhibition of paintings represented by Madonna of Raphael and a version of Leonardo da Vinci and many others. There were also statues made of marble and bronze, antique models, and works of legendary painters along with their signatures. On the corner of the drawing room lies the captain's organ, decorated with the works of Mozart and Beethoven. The captain then explained the actual use for this drawing room. On the walls are contrivances or tools that the captain uses to help him navigate the Nautilus, in which it helps him to determine his position and also the direction that the vessel is going towards. Among the tools and contrivances that are mentioned by the captain include a thermometer, which indicates the internal temperature of the Nautilus, the barometer, which indicates the weight of the air and foretells weather change. The hygrometer, which marks the dryness of the atmosphere. A compass, which guides the course. A sextant, which shows the latitude by the altitude of the sun. A manometer, indicating the external pressure and the actual depth of the nautilus. Alright guys, so far we have talked about who Jules Verne was and how the story of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea started. And we also have talked about how our three protagonists, the Professor, Conseil, and Ned the Harpooner, ends up in the Nautilus in which they meet with Captain Nemo. Because I have so many things that I want to share and talk about with all of you about this book, I decided to split up the book discussion into three parts, in which the second and third video will be coming out real soon so you guys can enjoy it without it being too long. So in the next video, I'll be talking about how Jules Verne explains the science behind the Nautilus. I'm also going to be talking about their underwater adventures with the captain and their experience roaming the seas around the world inside the Nautilus. In the third video, the last video, I'll mostly be talking about my opinions and thoughts about the book, my first impressions, what I enjoy, what I don't enjoy, and also I'll be discussing more about the character development and the inspiration for the characters inside this book. So it's more on the author side, on what inspired him to write this book. Or on why Jules Verne decided to make a character that way. Like is there a story? Is there a motivation behind it? We'll talk about it in the third video. So don't miss out. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications bell on. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate all of you, stay safe and have a great day, peace.